Give a round of applause here for, for Rich. Welcome on board. Thank you, Rich. Hey. So, yeah, enough about me, but I've been doing plastics for about 35 years. That just means I'm a millennial or a baby boomer. I'm sorry. So, question for you guys. How many uh, of you do actually done plastic parts, injection molding, been at a press? Okay. So I got 30 years and I got 30 minutes to do it, so I'll keep it short and, and fast. So I'll give you an introduction to uh, Nicola. Basically, we're a fuel cell company and an electric uh, semi-company. I'll go through market dynamics and the uh, molding process and the coating process, which is always the fun part. Uh, identify the cost drivers, and there's many, but I, I kept it to the top 10. And then I've been working with Apori for about three years refining the, the module, which we've come a long way, and it's really accurate. So that's the fun part. This is uh, Nicola Company. It's been around for almost 10 years, and uh, the last two years has been the excitement part. We have about 250 electric assemblies on the road and 25 fuel cells that we just built in the last three months. So we have two technologies. There's 42 buyers and two cost engineers. So it's, it's a startup, it's fast paced, and it's kind of exciting. Okay, so we're gonna get into the molding process. This happens to be a fascia tool. We did this in the webinar actually. So this tool is about an 18 to 20 week tool. Tier ones always have agreements with tool shops. That's why it makes it really tough. I work out of the Michigan area. So there's probably about 200 tool shops between Canada, Windsor, and, and the Detroit area, Grand Rapids, and Troy. There's so many tool shops, and there's not a lot of competitive bidding, right? Because they kind of all talk to each other. So it's a small family at the end of the day. So the market dynamics is very complicated. And normally, when you go to a tool shop, you're overwhelmed because it's a big hunk of steel, half the size of the stage. You can see here. So you got a core and cavity. The cavity is the class A part. The core is the top part. That closes, and there's about a three millimeter gap. In about a minute and a half, you have a part. And it cools down, and there's secondary and third processes. Like on a fascia, you have to flame prep it, prime it, and paint it. So there's a lot that goes on. The tooling is very complicated and very expensive. So you got to make sure your design's good and you do your mold flows. So here we go. We had all these startups, which I've been in two and three years, which is crazy. I think it's taken some life out of me, but Rivian and now Nicola. So we're sourcing maybe two, 3,000 tools in a six month period, which is fast, running all the cost models, doing the negotiating, finding you know, tool shops that can handle maybe 10 tools or you know, do a bulk. And the industry trend is it's, there's not a lot of skilled labor anymore that's available to do tooling because it's a specialty and it's mostly machining that does the work. The industry trend changes. Tool shops are either really busy and they're gonna charge you a lot, or they're really not busy and they're gonna to wanna to keep their labor cost moving. So I've seen it all in 35 years. I actually did the first plastic instrument panel with Ford in 1989, which was fun, because it was steel before that, right? It was the F-Series, F-150. Okay. So, what do you guys think, how much would it cost if you had to tool up an instrument panel, a console, a fascia, a door trim, 2,000 tools in a, in a vehicle, right? Plastic tools. And probably 150 are class A, like visible parts, right? So just take a guess how much money that is. I'll give you a hint, it's well over 20 million. It's probably closer to 40 million. So yeah, it's a lot of money. So you gotta make sure your blocks are your big cost. Like a tool like this, I'm talking large blocks, you're talking fifty to $60,000 worth of steel between the core and cavity. And the biggest cost driver is rough cutting. So you got a big fascia and it's a deep cut. You could take probably three to four weeks before you get that all cut, the core and cavity together. 
And if you find a tool shop that's got a machine that can do them both simultaneously, which not many are out there like that, that's kind of huge, right? And then you get into tool still types. If you're going to do low volume, let's say 50,000 parts for five years, you'd use aluminum or QC10 aluminum, which is a hardened aluminum. You'll save money on cutting because it cuts faster, but it's five bucks a pound versus two bucks a pound for P20 steel. So there's all kinds of trade-offs that you got to look at. And APRA does a great job of that, right? You can plug in as many variables as you want, as fast as you want, and analyze it like nine ways from Sunday. So this is the biggest cost driver is picking the steel. And you know, these steel blocks take eight weeks to get sometimes. They're not just sitting on the shelf somewhere because they're, they're huge. So it's the steel and the rough cutting is probably about 30% of the tool cost right out of the chute. So rough cutting is about, in Canada and the US, it's 75 to 85. In India, it's 25. In China, I think it's around the same price. They're pretty close. So you can see it, the hourly rate varies on the region. 1,285 hours to cut the core in cavity. That's about almost four weeks of cutting. That's a lot of time. 20, that's running 24-7 with a five-axis mill that's spinning a gazillion miles an hour, you know, with a little cutter, like, the size of your finger. So if you ever seen one, there's a bunch of chips laying on the floor right after it's all done. So, so the, the mold finish is also, like, really important. If you get a grain on a part, that's more time, right? That's three to four weeks. Because usually they build the tool and they test it, then they tear it apart and send it out for grain, like your instrument panel grain or a console or a door trim. So that could add up really quick. In fact, like lighting tools are very expensive because they're stainless steel and they're polished day one. So mold finish and greening could be like 30,000 on this tool. So that adds up quick. The other thing is uh, SVG gates, sequential valve gates. So it's like timing of the the resin through the mold. Normally they're around 200 millimeters apart and the average drop like that, Seventive, there's a couple, Husky makes them, they're around 10,000 a drop so you can see it adds up real quick. It gets really expensive really fast. So all this information, uh, you plug in the cost model, I really don't have an example of that but I'm available uh, if anybody wants to see that. It's a couple of the guys here from April are really good at showing it. So this was the uh, front tool off the Rivian pickup in the SUV. It had four slides. Each slide is about $12,000. Um, they're huge, massive pieces of metal, and they, they open up in each vector, and then the part comes off. So that means there's die lock in the part, and I won't go into a lot of that, but the main vector is up and down out of the part. And then the uh, yellow and the gray are the slides. Small slides are a lot cheaper, like smaller parts. Maybe I have a speaker grill. You got dog houses. That would be a lot less expensive. But this example is like the biggest tool. You know, it's, it's the 4,000 ton monster. And that's usually molded in about a minute and a half. <laughs> so after you, you cut your corn cavity, now you got to heat, treat, and stress relieve that corn cavity because you just weakened it very, you know, you've taken a big hunk out of it and you've weakened it. So to heat treat a corn cavity is about $42,000. And then another forty two dollars to stress relieve it, right? And it looks like dirt like that after it being right, uh, really nice and shiny after they cut it. That just means it's all stress relief. Four plates, this is just breaking down cost drivers of the tool. There's, there's so many cost drivers, probably 20, and you probably list them all, and you can go negotiate with a tool shop. It actually gives you hours of price for every operation, which would drive any tool shop nuts because they, they like to give you one price, right? So that's really hiding a lot of the cost. Hopefully there's no tool shop here. Here's an example that I did with Steve um, from Ray Prairie. So like I said, lifters and slides are very expensive. 
if you see these holes here on the armrest kind of part, die draw is coming horizontal out of the screen. So if you remove those holes and make them slots, on this particular example, it's 38K of savings just by making one little tweak like that. So this is like where you want your design engineers thinking about cost, like when they're, they're going through all this, right? I mean, this is just one example of many that I've sit with a designer and say, get rid of all this action. Because you got $300,000 tool, you have $50,000 worth of action. Let's make it a little bit simpler. This is actually a cost model I did. It's a fan shroud for the fuel cell. And like I said, you know, this is a $443,000 tool, and it's not very deep to cut. And a priori uh, will itemize, if you hit that value button up there, it'll list from the most expensive part to the least expensive part of making that tool. And like I said in my first slide, rough cutting, and you could see all the, the heavy costs, right? Just seeing, seeing the, the corn cavity is 1,285 hours at 65 or whatever it is an hour, right? So that's your big cost drivers. But there's over 50 line items in here, and it's really nice because you can go talk to a tool shop and go through it line by line, right? And they'll usually, they'll do this. I've done it with many tool shops. In fact, some of the tool shops have the software now. So it makes it really easy because I can get a tool quote in about an hour once I get all the information. If anybody's got any questions, just go ahead and rip them out because I'm going probably pretty too fast, but yep. 90% of this is out of the box. What I worked with uh, Aim Prairie was doing the hot drops because without doing a mold flow, you really don't know how many you need. But rule of thumb is every 200 millimeters. Yeah, so I've worked with Mitch and Steve and we've actually made that part of the last revision so it does it for you. And it actually gives you a mold flow to see if it's right. Which a mold flow costs $15,000. So you're getting a free mold flow from Aperori. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one of the, here, let me fast forward here. So here's the menu, and you have to put in if it's heat treated or not. If it's a big mold, you have to stress relieve and heat treat. The only molds that you wouldn't heat treat is like a very small part, like a, a small register bezel or something like that. But any tool that's about 2,000 ton or above, you would have to heat treat, uh, heat treat and stress relieve. Yeah. So there's about, I don't know, 15 line items in here, Mitch. I think that's... But they're all um, pretty basic, right? If, if you know part geometry and you know, and you're talking to your engineer, and this is easy to go through, you know, how many molds do you need? Well, what's your, are you making a million parts a year or are you making 10,000? And you can let Apriori do that for you by clicking there, optimize the cost. Number of operators. So when the part comes out, it's usually robotic, but you might have an operator manually pulling it off the tool after it's molded, right? So it's just like a checklist you go through. What else we got? Colorant. So if it's a molding color part, you would add colorant. That's usually a dollar a kilogram for like a molding color, black or whatever color you're molding. Then you get into regrain. How much regrain are you gonna allow on a part? That's a huge cost saving. The default's 25%. That's pretty much the industry standard from my experience. If it's not a class A part, you can even go higher. Because the gates and the runners, they take that and then they just regrind it and then they reuse it, which is smart, right? So this is a great checklist. After you go through it like three times, it looks really hard, but after you do this cost modeling for three plastic parts, it comes natural. So, like I said, I've been working with A Prairie for about three and a half years. Before that, I was a design engineer. I didn't even know what cost engineer was or any software. I've worked with them to get the correct presses that are in the software. There's 35 or 40 different press sizes and each supplier uses a different one depending on what they have. So these are all the benefits that going through a priori, like I said, in an hour you get piece cost and tooling cost on an instrument panel or a fascia. Normally that would take spreadsheets and you'd probably take a month to do that because you'd have to make measurements out of CAD and make a lot of assumptions. So the software does all it for you. Like I said, there's 50 items that you can negotiate with a tool shop. And this software has been within 10% since I've been using it. 
because there's different markups, different tool shops and different sizes, and it goes on if they're busy, they're not busy. So there's lots of negotiating when it comes to injection molds, especially like a fascia tool could be $750,000 like on the Amazon van because it's huge. And then you got a front and a rear. So you're at $1.5 million, you have two tools done, right? It gets expensive real fast. Like I said, you get piece price, cycle times, labor costs, burden rates. That's all in the software. And you can adjust it right to the supplier's quote. So if they're saying, no, no, we got this, this, and this, like you can adjust it, go back, and then renegotiate. Regional cost comparisons too, right? If you're doing it in China, you're going to be at a 33% tariff, right? If you go to Canada, you're getting 28% right off the top, right? If you go to India, I think India and Turkey is the lowest for machining rates, but then you got to get that tool home, right? So then there's there's lots of things to look at, and really you just got to analyze it and study it, and you'll find a good solution after doing it. So I've saved, I can't give you real numbers, but millions and millions on tooling using the software. It's not hard because it's data versus data. And it's a lot of fun because you're making, you're making a difference, right? You're saving your money on tools. Like I said, 40 to 50 million on, on injection molds for one vehicle. So if you can save 20 to... Both, both. Well, by eliminating action, because tool shops hate action anyway because they I mean that's extra labor you got an EDM and burn nose you got hydraulic cylinders it just adds complexity to the tooling and it takes longer right yeah it's great I don't uh, design and release parts anymore I cost them which is a lot easier right so that's all I got if anybody's got any questions I'd be happy to answer them Yes, yeah. We'll look at, you could do it like scenarios everybody's been talking about. You can run scenarios like doing tools in India, China, Korea, or Canada. You can run those four cost models, and real fast you're going to learn what's the cheapest. Because it's an hour, an hour apart, so it's pretty fast. It's pretty powerful. It does that all for you. The hard part is if a supplier's got a 3,500 ton press and a priori says, okay, you can do it in a 35 or you can do it in a 33 or you can do it in a 38, you got to look, what does the supplier have? And then you got to readjust it. But that's really five minutes of adjustment in the software because it gives a burden rate for every machine. It tells you if it's a, a Husky machine, you know, it lists all the machines, the labor rates, for that machine, it tells you how much that injection mold it costs new, and there are millions of dollars, right? Uh, 4,000 ton injection mold machine is probably $12 million. So it's, the software is always up to date, and if it isn't, I get on the phone and we get it up to date really quick. Because you're talking, you are talking millions and millions of dollars in tooling. So if you can, you know, save 20% of your tooling budget, that pays for the software pretty quick. Yeah, the default on the software, Mitch, I think it's, what, 9%? Yeah, it's 9 but you can adjust it. I would never give a tool shop 9% on a $750,000 tool, but you might give them 9% on a $100,000 tool, and that's all negotiable. Like, uh, the more you spend on tooling, the less markup there should be, right? So it's very negotiable, and if a tool shop's not busy, and, you, you know, you have a good tool shop that's, their presses are just sitting there and they're paying all that labor. They're very negotiable, trust me. It's, they'll say, what, what do you want to pay for the tool? I've heard that before, because like, they, they don't have any work in the shop. And if you've got 20 mills sitting there and not doing any work, it's a lot of money idle. Any other questions? If not, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to help uh, solve issues and save money. It's, it's fun stuff. So. Thank you.